we start by just looking at the, the financial position uh, for Shropshire Council over the next uh, three financial years, which is our current uh, medium term financial plan. So just using this, uh, this graph as a starting point. Um, that dot shows that in 2016-17, in terms of our gross budget, we were expecting to spend just short of 600 uh, 600 million pounds. Now this is on every service in terms of the gross budget. So this is, uh, this includes expenditure on schools which comes through in dedicated schools grant. This includes spend on everything from um, libraries, collecting the bins, uh, adult social care, children safeguarding, etc. So it's the total expenditure of the council in one financial year, 597 million pounds. Now the expenditure figure for 1617 is actually going to be a bit higher than that, and that's because there were a whole series, around about £16 million worth of savings proposals that were built into the current medium-term financial plan, which have not yet been delivered. There are plans to put those in place, but at the moment, that expenditure is still there. So our actual level of expenditure is, is closer to £613 million. The third dot shows um, our level of resources. Now I'll go into where these resources come from in a minute, but basically our level of resources for next year is £565 million. So what we have at the moment is a gap between how much we are having to spend and how much uh, uh, the level of resources that we'll actually receive. Now when you project those resources forward, the red block shows how our resources would continue uh, into the future and based on uh, the level of grants based on uh, government funding, etc. Uh, that red block is actually dropping away into the future. So our resources that we can spend on services is falling. The green block shows the difference that's been made or will be made on the basis of increasing the council tax um, over the next few years. So we've assumed a 3.99% uh, council tax increase from the 1st of April 2016. And then we assume a 3.99% increase every year beyond that. And I'll go into a bit more detail as to where we get that figure from in a moment. So that, the top of that green block shows that our resources look fairly flat over the next three years. However, when you project forward our expenditure, um, and the, the dark blue line is showing our expenditure growing um, over the next few years based on uh, an assumption that those savings uh, are delivered, the, uh, the, the orange line at the top is, is showing what it would look like uh, if those existing savings proposals are not delivered. You can see that the two uh, figures are getting further and further apart. So while we have a gap at the moment for the 16-17 financial year of 47 million, which we've had to solve by various different mechanisms, uh, a whole series of savings, but also using a lot of one-off funding to get those figures into balance, um, as we move further into the future, by the time you get to 2018-19, the gap is actually growing to around about 77 million. You'll hear. So, if we move from uh, looking at the overall picture and start to look at our expenditure and the question of why our expenditure is assumed to grow into the future, well, our current gross budget um, at the moment, 1617, you would take a figure um, of 576 million, which is our underlying expenditure before we start to do anything else. And, and you'd expect that expenditure to grow, uh, to continue into the future, because this is the cost of funding, uh, say, I think from libraries, museums, uh, waste, etc., into the future. Now, as you move forward through the years, what then goes on to that expenditure, what increases that? are a number of elements. So the red block there is prices inflation. So this is the inflation um, uh, growth that we have based on various different formulas for all of the contracts that we hold as a council. Around about 50% of the services that are provided by the council are actually contracted out. So each year, uh, those contracts are renewed um, and are, are, are subject to inflationary growth um, or, or actually are, are retendered and then those costs can, can grow. And that's our assumption of how those costs would grow into the future. On top of that, we have the green block. So this is pay increments and inflation. So this is for the staff um, within Shropshire Council directly employed and each year, even at, a, at a, a, the, the low level of pay increases that have been within the, the, the public sector for the last few years, an assumption around about a 1% pay increase, um, it still adds every year to, uh, to the cost of the, uh, of the council, assuming no other changes are made. The yellow block, um, this goes back to uh, the, the, the last calendar year, a number of 
um, uh, announcements that were made uh, by uh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Um, so uh, there was a change in relation to national uh, insurance contribution uh, levels um, that uh, impacts on all employees within the uh, within the council. That adds around about another two million pounds to our costs. There was an apprenticeships levy that was, uh, that was identified, so all uh, organisations over a certain number of employees would have to pay a levy for uh, apprenticeships to set up a national <coughs> scheme. Uh, that's, that cost is around about uh, half a million pounds for Shropshire Council. And then there's the national living wage. So the impact of the national living wage on Shropshire Council employees is minimal um, because the majority of employees um, are already on terms and conditions that, that, that bring them in line with that, that or, or above that level. Um, but a number of the contracts that we hold, particularly in the adult social care um, area, there are uh, some of those contract prices are, um, are low and competitive, partly because employees are paid below uh, the national living wage. So the impact of introducing these elements nationally uh, has, an, has um, by, by 1819, will add about £6.5 million pounds, uh, to the costs of, um, uh, of, of the local authority. And uh, no, no adjustment has been made to, uh, to local authority funding uh, to take that into account. Um, on top of that, the, the, the light blue line uh, looks at demographic growth. Now, demographic growth is the big thing that, that impacts on, on, on our finances going forward. So this is basically um, the impact of demand or change in population uh, within, the, within the county area. So if you exclude adults and you just look at um, uh, impact of, of demand changes in terms of some of the, uh, the leisure uh, facilities, but mainly in terms of uh, children's services and children's safeguarding, um, then there is a small amount of uh, growth, demographic growth that goes forward. However, when you bring in adult social care and you look at the demographic growth purely within adults, which is around about an aging population, uh, more people uh, moving, uh, moving into the area, more people um, by, by percentage uh, becoming uh, older age <coughs> within, within the population, and basically people living longer with more complex, uh, complex needs, um, that demographic growth really dwarfs all of the other changes that we have in terms of our growth going forward. Now that green block was the calculation that we made based on um, a, a complete redesign of the, uh, of the adult social care delivery uh, model. At the end of um, last calendar year, the start at the turn of this new year, we went back and we revisited that model to see how that demographic growth um, in adult social care and that redesigned delivery uh, of adult social care was impacting. Um, and when we came to do those calculations, we found that actually demographic growth was higher uh, than we expected. Now, we're currently reviewing that figure. We would hope that figure is going to change and, and would hopefully come down. But as you can see, the impact of demographic growth in adults, regardless of whether that grey block is not quite as big um, as it looks there, is the, the, the major impact on the growing costs of, uh, of Shropshire Council going forward. If we move to look at where we spend that money in terms of services, the best way to look at that is looking at the net budget. So this takes out um, expenditure on things like um, housing benefits, it takes out expenditure on things like um, schools through the dedicated schools grant, because fundamentally this is money that's passed to the local authority that then gets passed on to other organisations. The net budget demonstrates what we spend um, that we have some form of control over, and that's just around uh, 208 million pounds in total. So. List of services there, you may not be able to see them all from, uh, from where you are, but fundamentally, um, the, 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 the majority of the services that are shown there um, have very small uh, net expenditure budgets. So this, this covers everything from registrars, planning, outdoor recreation, leisure libraries, <laughs> regulatory services. Net budget fairly low. Now, the reason I've split those off from the ones at the top, the five services at the top, is for two reasons. The services at the top Clearly, as you can see, even if you can't um, uh, read all the, uh, the service areas, those five at the top, adult services, waste, children's safeguarding, environmental maintenance and learning and skills, dwarf the other services in terms of where our expenditure is. <coughs> what you will see when, the, when we move on to the, uh, the findings from the, the big conversation, you'll see that in terms of the areas that are most valued by people within Shropshire, the areas where most concern is that those five services at the top fall 
tend to, to correlate with the, the most important services um, that we hold. So fundamentally, that means that if we continue to deliver the services that people believe in and continue to deliver the services that we believe are our, our highest priority, actually the vast majority of our budget needs to be committed. And so if we move from where we spend the money to where the, the, the money actually comes from, where are the resources um, that, uh, that fund Shropshire Council? That red block there is the Revenue Support Grant. So this is a grant that's been provided for um, a number of years uh, to local authorities and was originally based on an assumption, a, 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 a criteria, a, a calculation that looked at uh, the relative need of local authorities across the country. So it would look at the number of older people, look at the, the length of roads that, uh, that uh, are within, the, uh, within each area of the, uh, of the country and then it would allocate a grant on that, on that basis. Now, in the current financial year, which we're a few days away from finishing, 2015-16, uh, RSG was worth just short of £44 million to Shropshire Council. By the time we get to beyond that graph into 2019-20 or, or maybe 2020-21, all of that RSG will have disappeared. On top of that, we then have the yellow and the green blocks now. The yellow block is business rates, business rates that come from uh, all the businesses around Shropshire that, that, that pay, uh, pay business rates. Um, we collect in around about £80 million worth of business rates across the county. Um, we retain 49% of that, which is worth, in the current year, just over £39 million. The other 49% uh, we retain, 1% uh, gets paid across to the, uh, the fire service, the other 50% gets paid to national government and then gets redistributed around the country, partly as RSG coming, uh, coming back. The green block um, above that is top-up grant. So if we move off business rates, the big block, the, the dark green block at the top, is the council tax. So the resources that, that um, we receive um, going forward is based on two elements, uh, well, well, three elements in total. The, um, the, the council tax is based obviously on the number of uh, council tax properties within the, uh, within, the, within the county and we're expecting uh, growth in the number of properties in council tax to be around about 0.8 to 1% uh, per year. The government have assumed that our growth uh, will be more like 1.6% um, every year. That's, uh, that's yet to be seen. We also uh, have the ability now to levy a 2% council tax increase purely as a precept for adult social care. On top of that, we're able to levy a general council tax increase, but we are capped at 2%. So if we want to levy uh, a council tax of above 2%, we would have to go out to a full referendum uh, and ask the people of Shropshire whether they support that. Otherwise, we're allowed to increase our council tax generally by 1.99%. What we've, what we've assumed within our funding for the next few years is that every year we will levy the 2% increase preset for adult social care and we will increase the council tax by a maximum of 1.99% each year. And what that shows is, is that that funding um, level is still actually dropping as we go forward because of the massive impact of, of RSG. Now what the government would say if they were stood here is, but that's not the whole picture, there are other changes that we're making to local government finance. So, this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated, but um, if, we, uh, if we work through it, same, uh, same basic information there in relation to uh, RSG and top-up grant. I've taken out um, the, uh, the uh, uh, business rates because, as I say, going forward the government is saying you retain 100%, but we have no idea what that really means. So RSG falling away, <coughs> top of grant we're assuming will continue um, at that sort of level. Now on top of that, what we currently are receiving is a grant called New Homes Bonus. So this, this is a grant that we receive for six years and it's basically the equivalent of a band D uh, council tax um, uh, level, which is around about £1,200 in Shropshire. Um, so for each new home that comes into use in a uh, financial year, not only do we collect the council tax, we get that £1,200 if it's a band D or, or above or below, depending on what band it is, um, but we will also receive for every single one of those new homes £1,200 as a, um, a grant for um, new homes bonus and we'll receive it for the next six financial years beyond that. <coughs> so this started back in 11-12, and we're now to, uh, at a point for 16-17 where we'll have that sixth year um, of um, uh, new homes bonus coming through. That's worth 
um, just around about £9 million to Shropshire Council. So that's £9 million of unring fence grant that there is an incentive to build more houses in Shropshire because <coughs> it generates more um, new house bonus into, uh, into Shropshire. Now, what you may notice is that that yellow block as you move forward and get to the 1819 is actually quite a bit slimmer than it was at the start. This is because, as part of the changes um, in uh, Chancellor's announcements, but also in the settlement, the local, the local government settlement, we're moving away from six years of uh, funding to four years of funding. So the amount that we will receive will drop um, over uh, those later years. Why? Well, I'll come on to that uh, in a moment. The blue block is Rural Services Delivery Grant. So as one of the 20 most sparse local authority areas in the country, there is an acceptance that uh, the cost of delivering services within a rural area, because of accessibility, because of transport, etc., etc., uh, is higher. And therefore, um, that rural services delivery grant is applied to um, around about 20 local authorities across the country. It's worth about £1.6 million pounds in the 16-17 financial year, and it will grow as we move forward to around about £4 million pounds in 1920. There's about 85, uh, 65 million of, um, of our, our SDG nationally that's available by that 1920. So we get a fair proportion of that. As part of um, the local government settlement that came out um, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the, the start, of, uh, start of this year, um, we, um, there was a, a delegation that, that went down to, uh, to Westminster to speak to um, the, uh, the, the MPs down there to basically plead the case for Shropshire to say that the impact of, uh, of, of the, 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 the funding changes was having a dire impact on our, on our finances. Um, as a result, when the final settlement came out, there was an acceptance within a number of local authorities that more funding needed to be made available in the short term. So that blip there for 16, 17 and 17, 18 represents two things. Um, improved rural service delivery grant, which was two one-off grants available in 16, 17 and 17, 18. And a transition grant, which is that sort of dark blue line at the top, um, which was again available for those two years. The transition grant's worth about 1.2 million across those two years. Um, the RSDG uh, is worth about 7.3. Together, they're about 8.5 million pounds as one-off funding in those two years. Helpful, but unfortunately, it's only for those, those two financial years that we get that funding, so we need something else to, to sort our problem out. On top of that, um, we then have uh, better care funding. So this is another initiative from uh, the government. So when I spoke before um, around adult social care and three and a half billion pounds uh, being required nationally, that was the assessment, and two billion pounds of that being generated through a 2% precept that's levied locally, the other 1.5 billion comes in through uh, the Better Care Fund. So this is additional funding into Shropshire, good news. However, where is it funded from? It's funded from New Homes Bonus. So they've basically sliced the New Homes Bonus and given it to authorities in relation to uh, better care. What does this mean? It means that in the 1819 financial year, we lose around about four million pounds of New Homes Bonus and we gain around about four million pounds of better care funding. So um, it doesn't actually have a great impact uh, on Shropshire. But, but going forward, that grey block is hopefully going to grow and hopefully will uh, overtake the reduction that we have in New Homes Bonus. And obviously there is that incentive, that potential to still grow New Homes Bonus, albeit at a slightly reduced rate. And then we have the green block on the top, which is the, uh, the council tax increases. So, as I said before, we're expecting a 2% plus a 1.99% general increase every single year. And nationally, the government, after years and years of saying, we will pay you a council tax freeze grant, we want you to keep your council tax at zero, um, and we'll cap you at 2%. In the national assumptions now, they are expecting every single local authority to increase its council tax by 3.75% every year. That's the national assumption they've taken, and by taking that into account in national figures, they are then able to say, we are putting more money into adult social care, and we are providing a local government with a cash flat situation. So that's our, that's our cash flat. Uh, across that period, you can see that green line 
pretty much stays the same sort of level. So we have to now look at a new way of financing within local government. All of those blocks in the middle, which are in one way or another grant, that grant in itself can be taken away from us um, if, uh, if there is a change in relation to the, uh, the philosophy of the government. So all of that funding, aside from um, the, uh, the council tax, effectively becomes one-off funding because we can't guarantee that it is going to be there beyond the moment it goes to 1920, if we move forward beyond the current parliamentary term, beyond the current local government financial settlement, there's no guarantees beyond that year. In, in this, uh, this graph now, that red block is showing our net budget going forward um, and showing how that, that net expenditure would grow into the future. When we add on adult social care, and I've mentioned this uh, a number of times this morning, <laughs> and it is a theme that's running through um, uh, the concerns of Shropshire Council at the moment, the impact of adult social care on the net budget, so this is taking into account the income that's generated through uh, people making contributions towards their, their own um, adult social care, that yellow block completely uh, outweighs in terms of growth any other area within the local authority. That green line at the bottom is showing the sustainable resources that we have going forward. So if you assume that we are going to keep council tax, the business rates as they stand at the moment, because we can't model it any other way, and the top of grant, that green line is showing our expenditure going, uh, sorry, our resources going forward. And the comparison between that green line and the top of that yellow block is the size of our problem at the moment. What are our options? How do we manage this? So we could look at focusing on only protected services, statutory services, all of our discretionary expenditure. So I've already shown you that we can look at reducing um, support costs. Another thing we can look at is reducing <coughs> structured protected services. So those areas like child safeguarding, like collecting the bins, like um, adult social care, um, vulnerable adults, all of those areas which are our protective, our, our highest uh, priority areas, we could look to bring those down to the absolute statutory minimum. There's always things that we can do to improve uh, efficiency. A little bit more positive, we could look at growing income from sustainable resources. Finally, um, the other positive area we can look at is uh, to our trying to identify new, uh, new income streams. So, um, could we look at energy generation, energy companies, could we look at house building, could we look at a number of things where there is a large impact uh, which would have you know, fairly significant financial um, benefits to the, uh, the organisation.